If I think about the sport of scuba diving and subtract from it my love of the underwater world and the natural environment and my obsession with technology and gadgetry on which the sport is heavily dependent, one of the things I love most about the sport is an hour to two hours of peace and quiet, self-reflection, no emails, no phone calls, no interruptions, just concentrating and it's very meditative. It's hard to put into words how valuable that time is to me. I don't get very much of it. So try to imagine if you can my absolute gut-wrenching hatred for these things. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? My name's James, welcome to Divers Ready, and this, this is your Mouthpiece Monday for this week. If you're new to this channel and you love scuba diving as much as I do, click that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, and that way you'll never miss any of our content, because on this channel, I use my years of expertise as a professional diving instructor to help make you a better diver. So I just got back from a trip to Grand Cayman, where I got to dive with some of my very good friends, both old and new, and shoot a whole ton of videos. I'm gonna make a whole series of videos just on diving Grand Cayman, so look forward to that. What? No, I'm not giving you a sneak peek of my Grand Cayman trip now, are you kidding me? I literally just dumped all the data onto my computer. No, it's not even edited. What's that, you insist? Well, why didn't you say that at start? If you insist, here you go. Okay, well, what's your How's that? I wanna be imposing. So that was just a sneak peek of my trip to Grand Cayman. Just a fantastic place to dive. Cool people, great dive shops. More on that to come. Keep your eyes on this channel. I'm gonna make a whole series just on Grand Cayman. But today, we're talking about audible signaling devices. Noisemakers, if you will. So I want to tell you about one particular dive I did in Grand Cayman. It was as close to a fun dive as I get. Yes, I was shooting video for the channel, but I didn't have any students with me. I didn't have that, that burden of responsibility of looking after someone. It was just me and my buddy, who's a good friend and a great diver, going for a fun dive. It's the north wall of Grand Cayman. It's picturesque. The coral is magnificent. The viz is 150 feet, if it's an inch. Gorgeous dive. But throughout the whole dive, all I could hear was bang, 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 bang. Annoying, isn't it? Really annoying. As I always say on this channel, I want to make you guys a better diver. And one way you can be a better diver is to not be that diver. The diver that ruins the dive for everyone else. So let me preface what I'm about to say by saying that the only person who should be making noise underwater is the dive guide, the dive leader, dive master, whoever, whose responsibility it is to guide you and navigate you around the site and keep you safe while doing so. Now, normally the dive guide is solo diving and you can see my video about solo diving up ahead and what I mean by that. But they're diving without a buddy and yet they're responsible for eight or 12, however many divers in the water. They don't have time to swim to you individually and check how much gas have you got? How much gas have you got? How much gas have you got? They need a way to attract your attention so that they can check you from a distance, make sure the whole group is together, and stay at the front and lead the dive from a navigational point of view. So whenever I'm on a guided dive, which as I said, isn't that often, but when I am and I hear tap, 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 tap underwater, I'm immediately gonna look at the dive guide. If it's not the dive guide making the noise, then that creates confusion because now I'm looking around like, where did the sound come from? Am I missing a whale shark swimming past? Am I missing a school of eagle rays? And that would be totally awesome if that was the occasion. The guilty party on this occasion was a diver who was diving with her husband and two sons. And I get that it was Grand Cayman and I get that it was exciting, but I also also happen to know for a fact that this wasn't their first dive of the trip. They have been diving for a week already, so there's really no need for bang, 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 look, a parrotfish, bang, 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 look, a butterfly fish, bang, 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 look, another butterfly fish. Those things are everywhere, everywhere. Literally all dive long. She dove in a position with one hand on the tank banger. It's a coral reef dive in Grand Cayman. Parrotfish, parrotfish, butterfly fish, butterfly fish, parrot, like, mm, stop it. Because if you don't know this, it's not just your husband and your two sons that can hear that banging, everyone can. It created so much confusion. It got to a point where one of the dive guides actually went up and surfaced, left the group to make sure that it wasn't the 
boat captain banging on the ladder with a piece of lead, i.e. the emergency diver recall. That's how bad it got. Absolute madness. So let's talk about sound underwater. This may be taking you back to your open water class, but sound underwater travels four to five times faster than it does in air. And the speed at which sound travels in water is predominantly affected by three factors. Temperature, the colder the water, the slower the sound will travel. Sound is affected by pressure. The deeper you go, the more the pressure, the faster sound can travel. And the third factor that governs how fast sound can travel underwater is density, or in our case, salinity. The denser the water, the more saline, the more salt content, the faster sound will travel underwater. And the reason that humans have trouble discerning direction uh, for sound underwater is because our brains can't cope with the switch between what we're used to hearing on land, the speed of sound, and the speed of sound in water. It's disorder orientating to the part of our brain that processes sound, which is why when you've got a diver in a group who's banging on her tank like it's a prism riot, it can create confusion among the whole group. So how can you not be that diver? Well, in a normal situation where you just want to get your buddy's attention to communicate with them your air pressure or you've seen something kind of cool and you just want to show your buddy, the first step is always to signal to them visually. Give them a hand sign. You okay? Come over here. Look at that. Now, if your buddy's not paying attention to you and if the matter at hand that you want to communicate is time sensitive, best thing to do is just to switch to them and give them a little squeeze on the shoulder. You can squeeze your buddy wherever you want. I mean, I'm just suggesting the shoulder, but depends how good a buddy they are, you know what I mean? I'm not judging, live your life. Now, if your buddy's being a bad buddy and they're too far away and not paying attention to you, then by all means, make a couple of noises and get their attention. A couple of noises. A couple. Now, that's in a normal situation. In an emergency, if you require everyone's attention, absolutely stat. By all means, sound the alarm, bang on your tank, make whatever noise you need. If you need people to come to you and you need immediate assistance, of course, that's an emergency. That's not what I'm talking about here. Likewise, if you need the attention of the whole group because you've seen something awesome that the rest of the group hasn't seen yet, a whale shark swimming by or the school of eagle rays, whatever it is, absolutely then go crazy and, and get the attention of the whole group because everyone's gonna wanna see it. And you also don't wanna be that guy that gets back to the boat and to be like, hey, you guys see the hammerhead? No, what hammerhead? Thanks for telling me, pal. You don't wanna be that guy either. You also don't wanna be banging on your tank and scaring away whatever it is you're trying to show people. So think about that. So absolutely you need to have an audible signaling device for underwater use. Just don't overuse it. That's my main point here. So what are your options for audible signaling devices? Well, first up, the one I've already mentioned, which is the tank banger. Uh, basically a rubber band with a plastic bead on it. You slip that around the bottom of your tank and then you can reach down behind you, grab hold of the bead, pull it out, let go, and the plastic makes a sound against the tank. Incredibly effective underwater, doesn't help you on the surface at all. So if you needed to get the attention of a boat, uh, this is not the option for you. The nice thing about them is they're cheap, they're quite loud, and they can't go off accidentally. It requires some effort to make sound underwater. So that's quite nice. Unlike the next victim here, which is the old that is ultra annoying. So most of these dive rattly things have a little magnet inside that attaches to a housing so that they don't rattle when they're attached and then you pull it out and then you rattle it and that gets attention. But, but I don't know, do you, do you like playing with rattles? How old are you? Three, two? My personal favorite for an underwater signaling device is the good old fashioned lobster tickle stick. The idea with this is you bang it against your tank and it makes a noise which will attract attention. Again, not an audible signaling device for use on the surface. Nobody can hear you if you're, if you're trying to get the attention of your boat, but definitely very effective in the water. If you're looking for an audible signaling device that will work both underwater to get your buddy's attention and on the surface in the event of an emergency and you need to get the attention of a boat, then I highly recommend uh, an air integrated dive alert alarm. I don't have one here to show you. I don't own one, but they are a tremendous and very simple little invention. I'll put a little photo up here to show you what I mean. Essentially what it is, is an assembly that fits between your low pressure inflator hose and your inflator button with the same attachments that forces air from your tank through a sound chamber which emits kind of like a duck call underwater, kind of like a wah kind of sound. Is that, wah? Is that how you make a duck call? I don't know. And then on the surface, sounds like an air horn. Obviously this requires you to have air in your tank, but not having air in your tank is a bad idea for other reasons too. Hopefully I don't need to make a video about that. But the thing I like about them best is it's hard to accidentally set them off. So I'll, I'll find one that I like and I'll put a link to it below, have a look at it. Um, highly recommended, nice piece of emergency kit. What do I go for for an underwater signaling device these days? One of these. I have a bunch of these clipped onto my D-rings that I use to attach different accessories, be that a camera or a light or whatever it may be. I just unclip this, bang that on my tank, and that makes enough noise. And then on the surface, for a surface audible device, a simple whistle. 
job done. And I actually confiscated this mid-dive. Sorry, not sorry, but you were ruining the experience for everyone. And I felt it was my civic duty to protect the experience of all the other divers on the dive. So, yeah. No, you were overusing it. You couldn't be trusted with this simple piece of equipment. So I confiscated it from you like a teacher would confiscate a kid's cell phone. So there are your options. And don't forget that a good diver is a quiet diver. If you're not getting the attention you need from your buddy, maybe you need to find another buddy, or maybe you should just get a kitten. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon. It really means the world to us and helps us keep making these videos, and I don't want you to miss any of the awesome content we've got coming up. If you like this video, feel free to click that little thumbs up, see how it feels. And if you didn't like this video, don't forget to click the thumbs down button twice. Let us know in the comments below, what do you use for an audible signaling device? Love to hear from you. So many creative people out there, so many ways of doing things in diving. I wanna see what you use. Until next time, dive safe, dive often. Woo. That's better. Squinty McSquinty there for a second.